you know, as the days go on, it, it's so interesting to see how far we've truly fallen away from God as a society. And history always repeats itself. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. And that couldn't be a truer statement because we're seeing the same things happen over and over again. And these are things that have been happening all the way back in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, we saw these idols and these golden statues and these golden calves being put up in order for the people to worship these false and, and pagan gods. And we're seeing that same thing happen even today, even right now. We have this eight foot golden statue. They're calling it bronze. But to my eyeballs, it looks gold. I could be wrong. I'm going to call it a gold statue. They got this eight foot golden statue that is being placed on top of a courthouse in New York City. We need to be very aware as Christians and not asleep right now. The Bible even tells us. Everyone says, okay, we don't know when Jesus, when Jesus is coming back. Nobody knows the, the day, the time. Nobody knows. And that's correct. But the Bible does say that he's going to come like a thief in the night. But the Bible says that we are not in the darkness, that we are children of the light. So although we can't predict the day, the time, or anything like that when Jesus is going to come, we can see the signs. We can see what's happening all around us because we are children of the light. To the people who don't know Jesus, to the people who don't read the Bible, it's going to feel like he's coming like a thief in the night because those, peop those people are, are in the darkness. Those people are asleep. And that's why it's more important now than ever for you to make sure that your family members, your friends are right with Jesus. Otherwise, y'all going to get left in the dark. But let's get into this story. I want to break this down. I want to read a couple articles and I want to show you some very interesting um, findings that some Twitter, uh, some Twitter journalists found regarding this situation. But first things first, um, before we get into this story, uh, consider becoming a member on patreon.com slash Nick Von Jones. The link is down below in the description. This will help us fight off the censorship, especially when we're talking about stories like this. And I talk about controversial stuff and the Bible. This world has made the Bible so controversial that it's hard to not be censored. Um, so by becoming a member, you support the ministry directly and you help us fight off that censorship. Also consider following me on Twitter as well. Um, everything is down below in the description. So this is specifically an article from Catholic News Agency. No, I'm not Catholic. I just thought they had a good breakdown in perspective on this situation. So let's get into it. Um, it says, an unusual new eight foot tall golden statue standing on top of a New York City courthouse has sparked controversy. With many across the country reacting to its unveiling with shock and disgust. One media outlet even called it a satanic golden Medusa. According to the artist who created the statue, it's a symbol of women's empowerment and an expression of support for pro-choice. I can't say the A word, so that's why I'm saying pro-choice. The satanic imagery so many have pointed out closely resembles that employed by a pro-choice group dedicated to banning religion from the public square. What does the artist say? The golden horned female statue titled Now was made by a Pakistani born artist, Sharzaya Sikander. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sikander 53, um, she's been on the advisory board for you know the arts in, in New York City. And she's described herself as a citizen of the world. I mean, I think that's pretty accurate. When you're making stuff like this, you definitely ain't a, you, you, you're not a citizen of heaven. 
You know what I'm saying? You definitely a citizen of the world if you making statues like this. But anyway, I digress. Um, it says that her work is meant to take a classical and Indo Persian styles and imbue them with modern feminist feminist inflections. I have no idea what that means. Maybe one of y'all can break that down for me. I, I, I don't know what that means. According to the artist, the statue was commissioned as part of a cultural reckoning to better represent 21st century central moors in public spaces. She described her statue as a fierce woman in a form of resistance. Resistance to what? Resistance to what? I think this whole movement, it's very selfish to me. In my opinion, the whole movement from a pro-choice standpoint, it puts a heavy emphasis on self and very little, if any, emphasis on other people specifically the other person in the womb. So this is a form of resistance to what? To God? To what is good? To what is right? Because that's what it feels like. It says the title now is meant to call attention to Sikander's belief that fierce female resistance is needed now. I think sadly enough, a lot of people would probably agree with that. A lot of people who don't know God, who are on that side of the fence from a pro-choice standpoint, I think they would agree that fierce female resistance is needed now. But let me just keep reading. I'll, I'll give you my opinion in a second. It says, atop the head of the courthouse statue are large braids that curl in on themselves to form goat-like horns. Let me show you these horns real quick. Let me show you these horns real quick. Hold on. This is, so this is actually a really good shot. So this is the back of the statue. It's just so obvious. It's so clear. It's so clear. It's so demonic, y'all. It's so demonic. And I don't know why this statue is kind of built like Kim Kardashian. I don't know. I might be tripping, but <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. But there was a better shot of the horns. Hold on. Here we go. So this is the artist. She was making the statue. And just tell me why they have to do the horns like that. Tell me what that signifies. What does that signify? So apparently Tucker Carlson, Fox News, he described the statue as demonic. I would say that's very accurate. It says the horn statue does bear a resemblance to the image of the goat Baphomet. It definitely does. It definitely does. There was one thing I wanted to read you that was very, very interesting that the artist had stated. I think it's on this article right here. Yeah, it's right here. So remember, this is the artist who made the statue. Listen what she, to what she said. She said the horns were designed as a symbol to the figure's sovereignty. The horns are a symbol of the figure's sovereignty. What are you talking about? Supreme power or authority. Who do you know that wants supreme power and authority on this earth?
the enemy, the devil. That's why he got booted up out of heaven. Because he wanted to be worshipped. He wanted the praise. He wanted to be God. And so he got booted out. And he became the God, little g, of this world. Little g. Hear what I'm saying. Not the big g. He's the little g, O-D, of this world. And they're saying it out in the open. They're literally saying it out in the open. The horns were designed as a symbol to the figure's sovereignty. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. But hey, this is the times that we live in. You know what's so interesting? I want to show you something. I was on Twitter and somebody uh, had mentioned something. I'm trying to see if I can get you a, a really clear shot of this thing. Somebody had mentioned... Um, Ishtar, which is a goddess, some pagan goddess. I don't know. But they said that this statue looks very familiar to this pagan go uh, goddess, Ishtar. And I don't know. What do y'all think? I think there's definitely some similarities, especially when you look at like the, the top of the head element. When you look at kind of like the wing element and everything like that, obviously it's a woman. I don't know. Maybe I'm reaching. I don't know. It looks similar. But you know what's interesting? And let me just warn you. This is where it gets kind of, you know, left field. But I was looking up uh, Ishtar, who is this goddess, pagan goddess, false god, whatever you want to call it, right? Ishtar is also known as Inanna. And Inanna was worshipped um, by these pagan people way back in the day. And she's a goddess of like sexuality, among other things. But mainly she was known as being a, a goddess for sexuality. And a lot of people were saying that this statue was based on this goddess named Inanna. And I found it interesting, and this is, like I said, left field, off the wall. Now we're getting into the weeds here. But it says individuals who went against the traditional gender binary were heavily involved in the cult, in the cult of Inanna. So individuals who, who rejected the traditional sense of male is male, female is female, people who said, nah, that ain't right. They were heavily involved in the cult of Inanna. Now, this is Wikipedia. I'm not going to act like this is all sourced out, like this is complete 100% fact. I don't know. It's Wikipedia. All right. But I just found it interesting and I wanted to share it with you. It also says that Ishtar is described as transforming men into women. So this goddess or false goddess, Ishtar, who some people believe is the inspiration for this statue, is known for transforming men into women. I just thought that was really, really, really interesting. Given the, the spike that we've seen in the amount of men that want to be women and vice versa. I thought that was very, very interesting. Maybe I might be reaching. Maybe I might be going off the deep end a little bit. But check it out. I want to give y'all some scripture um, because oftentimes I feel like when we talk about these type of uh, stories and these type of situations, I don't want to leave y'all like stressed out and, and like worrying and, and, you know, I don't want to leave y'all having a negative feeling after you watch these types of videos. I want to leave y'all with some encouragement. Like I said, look around us. It's happening all around us. The evilness that is becoming more and more prominent in our society, it's hard to ignore. It's happening at such a high rate. It's easy to kind of get discouraged and kind of feel, you know, a little bit down sometimes. I want to read this to you real quick. This is 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1. 
Now, just for some context, for those of you who may not know, um, this is a letter from Paul to Timothy. Timothy, um, I guess you could say Timothy was like Paul's like coworker in a sense. Uh, Timothy, he was a, a leader in ministry as well. So he's writing a letter to encourage Timothy. But I think we can learn a lot from this letter um, as believers as well. So 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 3, it says, Timothy, I thank God for you. The God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did, night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted, and I will be filled with joy when we are together again. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother and your mother, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. This is why I remind you to fan the to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidness but of power love and self-discipline so never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord and don't be ashamed of me either even though I'm in prison for him with the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer for the sake of the good news. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life as to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from the beginning of time to show us his grace through Jesus Christ. And now he has made all of this plain to us by, appear, by the appearing of Jesus Christ, our Savior. He broke the power of death and illuminated the way to life and, and immortality through the good news. And God chose me to be a preacher, an apostle, and teacher of the good news. God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power, love, and self-discipline. I think now more than ever, we have to remember that because now more than ever, there's so many things like stories, like, you know, what we just talked about and just all just the, uh, all the other evil that's going on in the world. It's so easy to fall into that trap of being fearful and forgetting who our father is in heaven. But he did not give us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of power, of love and self-discipline, self-discipline, there's so much temptation. It's at an all-time high, especially from a sexual standpoint. This world is so overly sexualized. And when we look at our young people, so many people are falling into a sexual addiction because of everything that's going on and because it's so glorified in this world. And we need to be self-disciplined in all areas, but that just comes to my mind specifically, but in all areas to not fall into the evil ways of this world. But also, like it says, never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. And be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. We see, just like in the, in the Old Testament, they would build these golden statues, much like the one that we see right now. They would build these golden statues. And you, you look at Daniel, right? Nebuchadnezzar was telling him to bow down to the golden statue and worship it. And he said, I'm not doing that. I worship God and God alone. He was willing to be put to death in order to worship his God and, and preach the good news and, and, and stand true to what he believed in, which is Jesus, which is God. And we have to do the same thing today. Our persecution is going to look different, but the fact of the matter is history repeats itself. They're still putting up these golden statues like they did in the Old Testament, and they want you to bow down to it. They want you to take their ideas of how this world should operate in terms of being able to make the choice that you want to make to, you know, get rid of your child and stuff like that. 
but we know that's not right. We know that's not of God. But ultimately, we have to be willing to take the backlash that is going to come as a result of us standing up and speaking out against these things. Because we know the backlash is going to come. But it says, and now he has made all of this plain to us by the appearing of Christ Jesus, our Savior. He broke the power of death and illuminated the way to life and and immortality through the good news. Jesus illuminated the way to life. That light that you see that is coming from Jesus that same light that is within us, that Holy Spirit that is within us, it's going to irritate people. It's going to irritate the world. And just like the, the artist of this sculpture said, she's calling for a, a, a resistance. She's calling for women to step up for a resistance, but a, a resistance to what? To what is truly good, what is right? Look, ultimately, we know that we're on the winning side. I hope that this encourages you in in some way. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Hopefully it does. Um, But yeah, like I said, let's keep praying for the people that we love. And let's make sure that everybody around us that we love and care about is saved. And that they're on their way to heaven. Because... This world is getting more and more wicked by the second. So let me know what you think. Get in my comments. Like this video. Subscribe. Consider becoming a member. I'm out, y'all.